Today's guests are Robert Gallant and Marshall Button, both of the Hubcap Comedy Festival fame. It's in its 18th year now. Happens in Moncton, happens in February. The roster that they speak about is very impressive. It's huge, in fact. Logistics, phenomenal. And at some point, maybe we should wake up to the economic driver it also represents. Because the business of being funny could be a growing business for New Brunswick. In the meantime, we can ask the question, where is New Brunswick's funny bone? Is it Moncton? Some say Miramichi. Who knows? Maybe you know where it is. Or maybe you have a really good joke about New Brunswick you'd like to post on our Facebook page. Either way, enjoy the conversation with Marshall and Robert. It, and it is a weird thing because, you know, why is it that humor is such an important tool? Like I, remember I was listening to an interview the other day where, um, well, it was this, uh, I just started watching this, this Jerry Seinfeld that we must have, everybody watches that they're comedians in cars getting coffee. Yeah. Yeah. So he's with Trevor Noah <laughs> mm -hmm. and he's talking about, Trevor Noah's talking about his father during apartheid days when this policeman, a white policeman on a horse, is ready to bash him across his head. And his father makes a joke and, you know, diff, you know, sort of diffuses the tension and makes, the, he said, there's a moment where he's making this white police officer laugh. And the guy says, okay, you guys go ahead there. And he, I'd want that from the moment he's about to bash him. So what the power of humor can do, hmm. yet it's not taught in schools. It's somehow suppressed as if it's a bad thing he like was some the class clown yeah right? somebody so. laughs and they're being strapped for it or they're told Shh, don't laugh yeah. when laughter is as natural as really breathing in fact laughter is known to be yes. the number one uh you know booster of your immune system more than any drug or anything you can take yet somehow it's suppressed so that you do have people going laughing and their 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 instinct is to stop themselves because for whatever stupid reason, as young people, they've been told it's not good to laugh, yeah. which is totally counterproductive to a good life. Mm -hmm. So one of your next tags for promoting is you could have uh, your logo fellow, whose name I'm blanking on now. What's your Roly. Roly. Yeah. Roly could be wearing a stethoscope and, uh, you know, a medical thing and saying, hey, come for your health. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we have uh, used that in the past about, you know... Uh, yeah the uh, laughter being good medicine and uh, yeah. Do you have a for instance of a show where um, it it was so exceptional I mean, over the years and it's not to pick one over anyone else but there's always moments in a performance where something kind of happened and it stays with you. Like a well there was that like, time that guy in the wheelchair got up and walked but uh, other than that I mean <laughs> there is healing power. No but, <laughs> no but there I mean there are some some guys who <laughs> like Patterson who's coming this year for example. Yeah. Um, it's come up to a, from a couple bars that I was talking with this year when I'm dropping off tickets and they were commenting back when the days when Steve was coming out and performing all the bar shows, not just a theater show, yep. that there was this group of people that just followed him from show to show to show because he was, he's so good, like he's mixing up his shows, he's not always doing the same material. Yeah, he's got something. But like there'd be 30 people show up behind him, watch his set. He'd get off stage and they'd leave with him and the bar's like, are you staying to see the other one? No, we're going to go see Steve again. Like <laughs> there's some people that just have that charisma and attraction yeah. that they're going to, like it's interesting behavior that you see sometimes come out just because like, and they'll go and they'll watch him and they'll just lose their minds all over again, like just, just <laughs> split in the gut. Yeah, I really like the ones who, I, you know, it's, it's wrong to say that they don't have a set. They, they have it, but it changes so much. Like a guy, Joey Elias, who's yeah. been many times, and he comes. And his thing is he just talks to people in the crowd. Mm -hmm. And and then they'll, they'll answer something, and then that gets him thinking about a funny thing he may have said in a bit last year or whatever. Years ago. And he, he kind <laughs> he of... so much stuff. And he <laughs> just reworks it like that. Yeah. Uh, this uh, Mark Forward's another one where he yeah. has routines, but they're so out there like they're so different from a normal stand-up and you know the guys who you go and not to knock them but i mean they're doing every syllable the exact same yeah. when they're in one or the other uh and people like it but for my money those are the moments that really stick out with me and it it, it really is like you're watching a play and an actor falls down when they're not supposed to or somebody um 
you know, trips over their uh, uh, their lines, or they dry, as you call it, they for, and they yeah. hate it. But the audience loves it, and that's what they remember because it's real. Yes, and it it you know <laughs> that it is an unrehearsed moment that someone and we like to watch other people suffering. And it's kind of like it's kind of like that's the basic humor, you know the. The, the guy slips on a banana peel or the coconut falls on the caveman's head and then they laugh at it. Yeah. And that's primitive, you know, that's as primitive again. But really the great comedians are out there without a net. And when they're doing that, you go, wow, this could go any way here. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes, it, most of the times it works, but the odd time it gets a little awkward. Well, yeah, it's, it's up to how the performer deals with it. Like, mm-hmm. do they freak out and leave the stage? I mean, I've seen it happen to Marshall <coughs> during Lucien. He's in his fishing shanty and he's, really eating a, a salmon sandwich on stage and he chokes on it in front of him. <laughs> and he's like, I'm like, I worry, do I have to go up and do the Heimlich maneuver? Yeah. He finally coughs it up. The audience is losing their mind. Yeah. Marshall just makes a couple more jokes about it and carries on. But, yeah. you know, it, it could have been a serious moment in the yeah. play, but it turned out to be yeah. like this hilarious addition to the show, right? Yeah. So. Your story reminds me a bit of uh, when John Candy passed away. They had some of the gang from SCTV reminiscing about when he auditioned. And there had so many people coming to the auditions, they paired them up two at a time and said, okay, do 30 seconds or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I think it was Eugene Levy who was saying that, well, here's this big fella and then this little guy. And the little guy hogged the stage the whole time. They were supposed to be throwing back and forth. None of that. And so Candy just kind of went, fine, you you hold court. Blah, 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 blah. And he stood behind him and started making faces like it's yeah. making faces behind <laughs> the teacher. Yeah. Yeah. He had them on the floor for the 30 seconds or minute that they had. He said, Levy said, when we all got together for some beers afterward to talk about what we'd watch, because we were exhausted, you watch all these people coming through, and yeah. you can't remember anyone. But there was this big guy, and this big guy didn't say a darn word, and he had us on the floor, and that was his audition experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Could take the moment, adapt to it, and be funny with mm-hmm. it. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it, it's interesting because there's that, that weird thing that happens in a person's brain where... If sometimes if you're trying too hard, you'll never get there. It's being in a total blissful blank state that you're relaxed enough that you are comfortable with silences, Mm -hmm. that you are okay with just things kind of not being funny for a moment so that it can be super funny later on if you follow me. Another favorite, and uh, he was here last year and many times, is this Derek Sagan, who we've taken and toured around. But... Again, you can watch him, and yeah, he has his bits, but he's so on and he's so different each time he does it that uh, you can just see there's a, there's a, there's a level of relaxation that he has that he's he's in his comfort zone, you know. Well, that tour that we did with him in the spring, he had um, a bit about on his trip to Jamaica with his with his girlfriend who gets motion sick. That started out as a seven minute bit on night one of the tour. By the ninth show, it was a 25-minute piece in the show. Like, it grew <laughs> just over the course of four or five weekends. It grew into, like, half the show because yeah. it just kept going and going. Oh, I'll try this piece in here. I'll try that and yeah. adds it up. And, you know, how do you turn seven minutes into 30? Well, <laughs> you do it every night or for a period of yeah, time. Yeah, and there are the rare breed who, you know, as the expression goes, they're writing on their feet. Yes. You know, yeah. so much of this, like, people think, oh, you just get up there and tell jokes and... Well, it's not like most people spend a lot of time crafting it, and then they go out to these these clubs that they're trying new material, so that when they come to this festival, uh, they have their routine down pat. Or in some cases, in some of the obscure little bars, they'll go off on tangents and trying things. But you really can can spot the ones who are writing as it's coming out, which yeah. is a pretty pretty unique gift. Yeah. So can we talk a bit about this year's show? Can you walk us through? You know, some of it, uh, we'll put the website uh, on our links and yeah. such, and, and uh, the cast of characters, English and French, that you've got coming. Yeah, so uh, each year in the festival, we try to do things a little bit different. I mean, there's a lot of the tried and true, this works, so don't break it in terms yeah. of what we do. But make sure we have a good mix of returning comics, so people who've become fan favorites, so to speak, sure. as well as always making sure we're bringing in new blood. So our new partnership with Sirius XM, for example, uh, they have a big contest they run every year called Top Comic. So it's who's the best comic in Canada, and the winner gets $25,000. And, and, of course, a lot of airtime and exposure. So we look at working with them. We make sure we bring in 
some of the people that have you know been runner-ups or winners in past years and we'll get into the habit of so this year Gavin Matz is coming in he's the winner from this year so we'll make sure that we're always bringing in the winner from that so that you know we're getting that's great you know, who's the hottest person on the block right now make sure that we're we're getting them yeah. in so that's a new component because of our partnership with Sirius XM but it, it, it certainly helps out because they're actually recording some of the shows here so our comics then get um, more exposure across the country which helps turns into them for corporate gigs etc because more people are listening to them yeah um, one of the changes we're doing too so we have our Thursday night for last show and that's like an all-star gala where you get usually you get like eight comics and a, and a host so we've had different hosts in the past like Mike Bullard and Candy Palmiter di- you know different people who are taking care of the evening but we've got all these other comics on the show one of the new things we're doing this year because we have Steve Patterson coming back and it's been a long time since we've had him we're actually doing five or six comics in the first half of the show and then Steve gets the whole second hour by himself so instead of him being a host let him stretch his legs yeah. because he's you know he is a huge favorite here and he's got a, a lot of stuff to do so we're just kind of changing up the format a little bit fun but a lot of people we still wanted to have a bunch of comics on the show because a lot of people Thursdays where they go and like they kind of pick who their favorites are and then make sure they see their full sets in the bars because they're doing seven to ten minutes at the Capitol, but they get to do a full 30 in the bars. So they'll kind of pick their things out that way. Um, on the francophone side, you know, we also looking at, as we said, sometimes it's hard for people like if they don't know them, like they might be a superstar in Quebec or a rising star in Quebec, more likely. Yeah. That isn't as well known here. We have to go after that superstar level. So this year we have Jean-Michel Octil. We went on sale in September, and with only some Facebook notification, we sold half the show by the end of September. Like, it was a pretty big mark difference, like when you bring in that right name kind of thing. Wow. But with uh, with working with Jess Poirier on, on bringing down some of the, partnering on some of the Quebec artists that are coming in, and, and of course, the big sponsor with that site is um, the uh, Rendezvous um, de la Francophonie. So it's, it's an organization that promotes... Um, you know, French shows and culture across the country. So, mm-hmm. so they're taking it across the country. So when they come here, they're working with us. But it's great that we're able to bring in some of those rising stars from Quebec, the up and comers, who are going to do bar shows as well, so they get exposed to a broader audience. Yeah. But for the first time, we really have a, a bigger conduit for up and coming Acadian stand ups. So we've done the review in the past, but that's more sketch comedy. This allows is allowing this development of, of our stand up comedy. And because of the connection with some of the agents coming from Quebec, it's turned into some of these guys actually getting to go and start working the Quebec circuit. Like Julien Dion, last year we did our bilingual gala for the first time. And so we had him in it. He was, you know, he was nervous. He was scared. He had to write. and Because he's French first, but he's never performed in French. He's only performed in English. Oh, my. He's gotten that start on that side. Yeah. So this was the push he needed to get going on it. Um, did a really good job, impressed people, and now Francois, they're doing some tours in Quebec. He's hired him to go tour with him in French. So it's opened up a whole new career market for, for Julien, who started out winning the open mic, you know, grinding it through, went and lived in Toronto, lived in New York, like working all those clubs and hustling and yeah. getting his time up. And, uh, you know, things are now starting to, to advance to that next level, and, and a lot of that is because we're able to help make connections for some of those up and coming. Uh, of course, he didn't mention Tom Green, who's the big star who's coming this year. So that's our Saturday night show on the first weekend of the festival. And uh, interestingly, like we, you know, the the thing is, it's a comedy festival. So we, we want people to come and have a show and laugh. There's a lot of people who think, oh, Tom Green, I'm not going to go to that because I watched his show and he's going to eat a raccoon on stage or whatever. <laughs> but the thing you got to realize is we wouldn't have booked him if he didn't have an act. Like he's a stand-up comedian who's plying his craft constantly. That's what he's been doing most of the time since his movies and his TV specials and his time on Donald Trump's Apprentice or whatever. That's been the constant with him. And he's a very good stand-up, and you will come and be entertained. Well, in fact, like he's right after the festival, he's got a... Um... A, a long run starting in Vegas. He'll be doing a residency. a residency there. So, I mean, that doesn't come without actually being able to sell tickets kind of thing, right? Yeah. So he's got a solid act and, uh, you know, a really great performer. So we're really looking forward to that show. That's so a that's, great thing to capture because here's someone who's playing Moncton and then playing Vegas. 
Well, and yeah, one, one of the things New Brunswick's got to catch on one day. Like we're good. You know, you yeah. guys have created something that's good. And it's to that scale because the talent will want to come. We, we've got to get over that hump. The other thing that whistles through my head is New Brunswick hasn't had a, other than Marshall playing Lucien, uh, and maybe I'm missing it in, a, in, in Francophone community, but New Brunswick's got a funny bone, which is what we talked about last mm -hmm. time. But mm -hmm. it needs a critical mass of comedians to start poking fun at the politicians or start poking fun at some of the things we do mm -hmm. so we can laugh at ourselves a bit more. Because that's mm -hmm. the great pleasure that you bring when you do your Lucian. Is that you making us laugh at ourselves? Yeah. And and, and there's so much raw material. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. it's it really is. I think uh, I couldn't have imagined this much activity, you know, going on today. Like when we started, I couldn't have imagined it. So it's it's refreshing. And uh, as Robert says, you know, you go to there's a yuck yucks now in St. John. Uh, there are different venues. I know in Fredericton, certainly in Moncton, where on certain nights of the week you can go and there's these local comics who come out and, uh, you know, will promote themselves or be promoted by the club. And, uh, and you know, sometimes it's pretty lousy stuff, right? <laughs> but it doesn't get to be good without keeping doing it and developing. It. And the great thing about comedy is it's pretty easy to figure out what works and what doesn't you know either people laugh like or they don't immediate reaction. <laughs> yeah. and there are a few of them who'll stick with it god bless them yeah. after they bombed a few times you know but they're you know eventually it's like water it seeks its own level and uh you know good people uh, get better and uh you know people who are just starting out that have the potential can eventually get good as well you yeah. know and that's that's nice to see Obvious question, but the, the cultural differences, the language differences, uh, is there a different sound to the laughter? Because the joke will be a bit different because of the cultural difference? I, I think that uh, certainly from my background of theater, um, the francophone is certainly much broader and the audiences are more robust. And uh, and interestingly, because Moncton is known as one of the places in the, that have the best audiences in Canada. Okay. And I would say, you know, Dalhousie, New Brunswick is another place. No bias there. No bias. <laughs> All right. But not just for my stuff. And Cornwall, Ontario. And different people who've played those places will tell you the same thing, whether they're doing something in French, in English, or a mixture of both. And I think it has to do with that French-English mix. I think it has to do with the fact of people who are kind of, you know, picked on a little bit because of their... Uh, the way they speak or the being a, a minority or having to uh, live a little bit in an English world even though you're francophone uh, don't take themselves too seriously and are quick to laugh at something mm -hmm. so as Robert mentioned we started something last year we thought well the first time we'll do this le bilingual show <laughs> and uh, there's a young man who works at the Capitol he teaches at our theater school and works in our box office recent graduate of Mount Allison, his name is Xavier Gould, and he developed this character, and it's hard to describe, but it's called Jacinth Bourque, and Jacinth is like a valley, a Vicadian valley girl, like, yeah. he, <laughs> and, and it's, you got to check this on YouTube, and he's had all thousands of hits on this, so we have him as the host of the bilingual show, and it's opened the door to an entirely new audience, yeah. and traffic we're generating with all the comments on social media and the well we actually and we just sold it out at the end of last week we we finished selling out the show we're at a at a theater in Dieppe, so we have just over 200 people coming out so yeah it's gonna be a good time but yeah the the, the media the, the the comments and and discussions on facebook um and we we had just sent through some videos to his, his stick is kind of like complaining like nothing's going my way <laughs> nothing's good enough and so we're having him host and he's on there complaining like <laughs> the I want to perform I don't want to like I'm a comedian why am I hosting I'm better than that and <laughs> so it's just us and then poking fun back at him so yeah. but it just builds up all these followers that are <laughs> no, it's yeah, a lot of fun. And he's, and he really, if you don't speak French, you can understand him because of the chiac. Yeah. yeah. But he's, uh, he's got some funny ones. Check him out on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. So it's we'll, great that he's. Uh, we'll connect that and put that in the show. Too. Yeah. We'll put the link down below. Yeah, you should. Yeah. Spread that around. Yeah. So, uh, in doing a bit of prep for the interviewing you guys, and, it, and it's raw material, it's like somebody should get hold of it. One of your sponsors is Org Organigram. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. So, and it's the educational component. You've got to identify it on your website. 
So how much, you know, the, the raw material that could grow out of that? Would, well, which, yeah, speaking of raw material, this, this is what we're giving to what the comedians <laughs> yeah. part of their Welcome. kit. I didn't know what it was, but I guess it's a, it's a thing. No, you put your, whatever, you put your marijuana in there and you, you crash it or whatever, like to oh. put it in. No, I haven't had occasion to use it yet, but, <laughs> but uh, good on them, you know, like uh, yes. certainly yes. Uh, the comedians, so many of them, much of their material uh, revolves around um, um, just talking about smoking dope. So it's it's right, you know. And well, and once we pass that July first date, and we are we're into next year, yeah, we can do a four twenty show. We can do something tied in with them, and yeah. uh, but I mean, you know, they'll be there and they do some of the education component and that that stuff. That's great. Like in some ways, it's not just a joke because we know. They've just done a huge donation in terms of dealing with, even though it's not their side of the business, but the opiate crisis, yep. like they're giving kits out to all the frontline workers yep. that can deal with the noxaprone or whatever it is and deal with that. So, I mean, it is something that they take seriously. They're being good corporate citizens. Yeah. And we're very happy that they're coming on board and working with us. Well, and plus, at the Capitol Theater, we are going to pump marijuana through the air right. exchange <laughs> For system a few extra laughs. <laughs> during the show. Yeah. So that's a new feature this yeah. year. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you for watching. Be good. Have fun. Love each other. The Dennis Report is an independent media production. To support the program, go to DennisAtchison.com and click Become My Patron on Patreon. 